Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Lifetime Legacy Lawyer Podcast. I'm your co-host, Thomas Vick, joined by Seth Wilson, another co-host of the Lifetime Legacy Lawyer Podcast. Seth, how's it going today? Hey, Thomas, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing, doing well, well, doing, doing well. well, just, just coming, coming towards, towards the end, end of the week. week. It's, it's Thursday, Thursday afternoon, afternoon. Uh, uh, kind of in, in early, early May, May still, but it's, it's feeling nice outside, outside, a little bit rainy, rainy. but I think but the, the weather, weather may dry up a little bit later on today, but it's been it's been good. How about you? Yeah, it's always fun around Indianapolis in May because you're getting ready for, you know, there's some big spectacle in racing or something like that that happens here every May. You start to see all the... All the things that go alongside of that, we have the NBA playoffs going on, you know, so just, just a lot of fun stuff going on at this time of the year, seeing the flowers come out and things. So got through the April showers, we see some of that May flower uh, coming out of it and nice cool mornings and just enjoying that uh, that refreshment, if you will, during the during the midst of all the other stuff we, we have going on and trying to help our clients. So that's... Uh, yep, yep. Always, always a good time. So I, I was looking through your uh, website today and came across your blog post on the uh, special needs post. I thought that'd be a good topic to talk about today. So it, kind of walk us through, if you would, what is what scenario would be appropriate for some type of special needs or supplemental needs planning? Well, the, the, the two, two programs, programs that, that special, special needs, needs planning, planning is based, based around, around uh, are Medicaid, Medicaid and, and SSI, SSI supplemental, supplemental Security Income, income. And, and both are federal, federal programs, programs but, but SSI, SSI is really federal, federal only, only, and, and Medicaid, Medicaid is, is a federal and a state, state program. program. You, know, you know, it's, it's funded, funded federally, federally, but, but it's really implemented by each individual state. And so throughout the country, the rules are somewhat similar for Medicaid uh, throughout the various states, but um, you know, each particular state may have their own twist when it comes to Medicaid rules. Um, and when we're talking about uh, those with special needs, we're really talking about those that would qualify under a Medicaid program or under the SSI, the SSI program. program. And, and, you know, you know both, both of those, those are means tested, tested programs. programs. And, and for many for states, many states SSI, SSI and Medicaid, and Medicaid run, run hand in hand. They run, run on parallel lines. lines. So, so for, for instance, instance SSI, SSI has, has a limit of resources to $2,000. So an individual can't have more than $2,000 of, of financial assets. Uh, yeah. If they do, if they then do, they're, they're, they're not, not qualified, qualified for SSI. SSI. And, and the, the SSI, SSI states, states for Medicaid, Medicaid have that same rule. rule. $2,000 is all that they're able to have. have. And, and um, um, you know, if you're above $2,000, $2, you don't qualify for Medicaid. Medicaid. And, and, you know, individuals, individuals that, that are on these, on these programs, programs, they qualify for SSI because they're disabled, disabled. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, they qualify, they qualify you know, disabled from a physical standpoint, standpoint, maybe there's a, a, mental, a mental, health mental health need, mental health, health challenge, challenge that is in play that qualifies, that qualifies them for uh, one of these one programs. Of these and, and so, so $2,000 is not a lot when it, when it comes to, you know, being, being able to take to care of a human, human person. person. And, and while, while you know government, government benefits, benefits do offer, do offer a lot, lot it's, it's not nearly enough, enough sometimes for individuals. And um, special, special needs, needs planning, planning comes, comes into in play when, when we're, we're, we're thinking, thinking about how can I provide can I for somebody, for somebody that, is that is on SSI or on Medicaid, or Medicaid and, and you know, we, know we, we, we want them to keep, keep those, those programs, programs in place. place. That, that's a great summary, Thomas, I, and I appreciate that. Because you think about uh, some of these situations, especially when a, a kid um, or a child that you have in your house may be under this particular plan, whether that's Medicaid or SSI, and now they're starting to age through the system and maybe they're turning 18 soon. Now you have a whole host of other challenges of, to approach and think through as you're going through that. And I see that quite a bit in my practice where I will have someone who has a child who is now fairly high functioning, 
but still need some support through the process. Maybe they need help getting a driver's license or a state identification card, or now that they're turning 18, working with their providers to get whatever benefit or program in place that they're eligible for. And that's where the parents at 18 start to get disconnected from the process because the individual is now a legal adult. And so there's some bridge uh, building that needs to take place from that standpoint as well. And so kind of two sides of that coin as you're, as you're thinking about it and where the, where the individual may be along their life stage as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and each, each one, one of these, these cases, cases is uh, fact sensitive. And, and, you know, an you attorney, know, attorney is going to have to make a judgment, judgment on, on whether, whether that, that, a, that, that child, that 18-year-old child, year old child is, is able to, to, to execute, execute a power of attorney, attorney or is not, not able, able to. to. And, and it, it might be that, that since, since, you know, you a, know a, child a child has been, has been under, under the age 18, the parent just typically has been able to make decisions for the child. But when the child turns 18, then we've got the issue of... Well, well, we need we some need kind some of legal, legal representation, representation. And, and maybe, maybe it's, it's that, that we need we to get, get a guardianship, guardianship in place. In place. Um, um, you know, that's, that's, that's typically, typically what, what, what needs to happen if you're, you're dealing, dealing with, with uh, a child that has uh, developmental, developmental disabilities. disabilities. You need to, need to go to court go and, to get, and get, you know, some kind of order that says that the parent is now the guardian. And, you know, those aren't very controversial, very controversial really. really it's just it's kind just of a, a, matter a matter of we got to get it done got to go through the process to get it done but that's that's probably the starting point, point for a lot of, a lot of parents, parents is am i able am to I get the power of attorney power or am i able, able to get you know guardianship in place which one do i need to go to go with yeah and then you have eligibility rules to think about as part of that process. And I think that kind of what tied into a couple of your ideas here on the blog post this week. So what are some of the uh, options in terms of available account or documentation that may need to be in place to protect that eligibility? Yeah, so, yeah, so thinking, thinking about, about from, a, from a parent's perspective, parents perspective or maybe a grandparent's, or grandparent's perspective, perspective and wanting to provide, to provide for, for an individual, an individual with disabilities, disabilities. Uh, uh, you can you set can up set what's up called a, a third-party third special needs trust. trust. And, and a third-party third special needs, needs trust is kind of set aside, set aside for, for that, individual, that individual, but the individual, the individual doesn't have, have uh, isn't the trustee, trustee of it. So you, so get, you get maybe get another family member to be the trustee of this third-party special needs trust. And that... Uh, trustee, trustee is able, is able to, to supplement, supplement the needs of the individual, individual with disabilities. disabilities. So, so food, clothing, and shelter, shelter is assumed to be covered by SSI and Medicaid, and Medicaid but, but what about expenses, expenses to, go to go on a trip, trip or, or to go to, go to a concert, concert or, uh, or uh, to, to get to, to go to family, family reunions or, or maybe, maybe assistance, assistance with, with Something that Medicaid doesn't cover, you know, maybe it's dental work or uh, vision uh, needs that an individual may have. So there are just a whole range of uh, categories of assistance that aren't provided by Medicaid that a third-party special needs trust can can provide, and it's set aside. It's a third-party one, so that means that the resources really never came into the hands of the individual with disabilities, and so Medicaid or SSI will not count it as a countable asset towards that $2,000 limit. Uh, so that is a great way for a parent or a grandparent to say, I know that you know my loved one is going to need help after I'm not able to be able to take care of those needs like I have in the past, and you know, and maybe, and maybe you can you talk can about this a little, little bit, Seth. Seth. The advantage of giving, you know, giving resources or assets into a third-party third trust, trust is better, better. Uh, because, because, you know, it's you better, better over the over option, the option of, of giving the money to somebody else, else and expecting that person to take care of an individual. individual. Yeah, and, we, and we've talked about kind of that challenge um, in terms of what that does maybe to your taxing situation or just management of that um, fund. So if you 
want your oldest to take care of the next oldest and you give all the funds to the oldest, that just puts them in a very uh, challenging situation in terms of making sure that the next is taken care of. The supplemental or special needs trust can really define the terms. It holds a bank account for those funds and it just makes the whole process a little bit more organized. And if something would happen to in this situation, right, the, the oldest child who's taking care of the next one, who steps into those shoes? And the Supplemental Needs Trust can set out some of those terms and there's a framework in place and someone may be more willing to step into that successor role because there's kind of a good accounting of what has happened. And it's much more uh, straightforward to administer that way rather than, oh, now I have all these funds. What do I do? How do I set them aside? You know, those those kind of things over time. Yeah, yeah, and, and so, so there's, there's just, just the structure, structure of the, the, the special needs special trust, trust that is, is a great way, way of doing, doing it. it. But, but then, then also there are some retirement, retirement planning slash tax, tax planning benefits, benefits to naming a, a third party special needs trust as your beneficiary. beneficiary. And I'm and specifically thinking about uh, an IRA, IRA beneficiary. So, so uh, some, some people, people may be aware of the recent changes with. Uh, IRAs and 401ks, 401ks as, uh, as uh, you know, that, you know, that came, came about as a result of the SECURE Act, Act uh, within the last four or five years. years. Um, um, but one of the rules uh, used to be that you could draw out an IRA over the course of a beneficiary's life expectancy. And the SECURE Act limited that, generally speaking, to 10 years. But one of the exceptions to that rule change is if an individual is um, disabled, if he's receiving government benefits like this, a disabled child, then that person can actually extend that IRA over the course of his or her life expectancy. But it doesn't have to come directly to that beneficiary. That would have bad effect on, on Medicaid or SSI, for instance. So you could name a third party trust and, and that, that trust could be the beneficiary, beneficiary and, and, you know, the, the beneficiary, beneficiary, you know, it's kind of, you see through it, and the beneficiary is actually the special needs individual. And, and by, by setting, setting it up it like, like that, that, you know, your loved one, one with special needs can actually extend that IRA out over the course of life expectancy. And if your, your loved one, one is in their 20s or 30s, maybe 40s, that's going to be a long time of tax deferred growth, and that can be a, a huge benefit. And it's done through special needs trust planning. Yeah, yeah. And, and there are other types of planning available that don't necessarily require you or a third party uh, setup of a supplemental needs trust. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so, yeah, so another, another one, one is, is well, let's, well, let's say, say that an individual. individual uh, receives, receives an inheritance, inheritance. Uh, it just it comes, comes maybe through, through a transfer, transfer on death, death account or transfer, transfer on death deed or paid on death account. Uh, uh, an individual, individual on one of these means-tested means programs program receives uh, some inheritance, inheritance and, and let's just say that it's $50,000. Well, that person is now $48,000 over the limit. What do we do? Well, you can, you can set up set what is called a first-party first special needs trust. trust. And that, and that first-party first special needs trust can be an exempt, exempt you know, transfers, transfers into it can be an exempt transfer for SSI, SSI and Medicaid purposes. And, and you can immediately get down, down to under $2,000. Similar so rules, the individual can't be this, the trustee of the first-party first trust. trust. But... but it, it, you know, the money, the money can, be can be used for all the same purposes as, as a third-party third trust, trust, going on those vacations, family reunions, going on outings, uh, uh, taking care of you know durable, durable medical, medical equipment. equipment. All, all of these things, things can be taken care of through a special needs, needs trust, trust. first-party first party or third-party. Third party. And, that, and that, that's, that's one way of getting under the under the limit. And you know, you know, perhaps you know. You, you don't know who don't the know trustee, who the should, trustee be. should be. Maybe that, Maybe individual, that individual, unfortunately, there are circumstances like this where it's just, it's that, just person that person and he or she doesn't she have, have somebody to somebody be able to handle, handle money, money for him or her. Money. And, and 
you know, they're, you know, they're able, to able to understand that, that they need to do they something, something to qualify for Medicaid, Medicaid but, but they don't really they don't know exactly, know exactly who, who, who can serve who can in that role. that role. Well, well one of the, one of the other, other exceptions, exceptions, if you will, in these special needs, needs trusts trust is, is to have a have pool to trust. trust. And, and one of the, the more, more commonly, commonly known, known ones here in Indiana, Indiana is called the, the ARC Master Trust. trust. And, and it's, it's sort of sort the same, same effect as an exempt, exempt resource. resource. But, but from, from there, there the, uh, the, pooled the pooled trust, trust or the ARC Master Trust here in Indiana, Indiana can uh, actually, actually pay the bills, bills of the individual. individual. So maybe, maybe they need they help, help with paying a medical bill or paying a... Um, um, you know, you know for, for vision, vision work or, or, or for, for dental work, work. Something, something like that. that. Payments, Payments can be can made out of the pool trust, trust and, they're, and they're, they're managing the money, money and kind of having, having oversight over, over it. it. So, so that's, that's another, another way, way of kind of taking advantage, advantage of some of these Medicaid and SSI rules. Yeah, and, and the differences are often between like the third party trust, the first party trust, and the pool trusts are how the beneficiaries are set up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and of course, course the the, and and the contingent, contingent beneficiary. So the the, the primary, primary beneficiary is going to be the individual with disabilities. Uh, but, but then, then who, who, if there's anything remaining after that, then who gets, gets that, that money? money? And, and the first party trust and the pooled trust, um, if it is the individual with disabilities funding it, 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 it goes to. to Indiana, Indiana Medicaid and state recovery here in Indiana. Indiana. It, it, it goes, goes to, to pay back Indiana, Indiana Medicaid for what they've extended on an individual's behalf over the course of his life. Um, but with a third party trust, the contingent beneficiaries can be really anybody, and it doesn't have to be the state of Indiana to pay back um, Medicaid and state recovery. And so that's a big distinction. You don't want to just say, well, it'll, it'll be, okay. be okay, you know, they can, they can set up a first-party first trust, trust and, and they'll be fine. You, know, you, you can, can set, set it up in such a way that it's a blessing for, for the individual with disability, disability, but then also individuals that come after. Yeah, and, and then finally on your uh, blog digest, you mentioned a concept called the ABLE account. And what is an ABLE account? An ABLE account, I think... What does it stand for? Achieving better life, life experience. Achieving better life experience. And this is a great way of letting individuals with disabilities still handle their money and being able to have control over their funds. Uh, throughout everything I've talked about so far, I've been saying they can't have control, they, they can't be the trustee. But with an ABLE account, they actually are in charge, and they can say, well, I want to spend money on this, and, and it's an exempt resource, and it can be exempt all the way up to $100,000 of value. So you know, there can be quite a bit of money that is contained within that ABLE account while allowing the, the individual to have control over that. And you, know, you can set up a... Uh, a, special a special needs trust, trust in a way that will fund the ABLE account. And, and so, so the, the trustee, trustee is saying, okay, okay I, got I got this money in trust, but I, you know, so-and-so so can, can handle this amount of money each month or each year. And, you know, it, it, it promotes independence and, and not so much reliance on, on the trustee or anybody else, government, you know, entities included. Yeah, and a great tool in the right circumstance, right? I think you mentioned that earlier is each of these scenarios are very fact dependent. And so really sitting down and understanding kind of which level makes the most sense. It's it's a, a wide analysis that needs to take place in keeping with a lot of different considerations. And so working with an experienced estate plan lawyer there is is very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. 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 But, but you know, you know doing, doing special, special needs planning, planning is one of my preferred practice areas because it's always kind of a, a neat thing to say, I can put together this plan for this family and I know that it's really necessary, the need is there presently, and, you know, this plan is going to really benefit them in the future. And, you know, in particular, I'm thinking about 
you know, that, that retirement, retirement planning with, with the special needs trust. I mean, you know, if you've got, got you know, several hundred thousand dollars in an IRA and you want to name an adult, adult child with disabilities as a beneficiary of that, that special needs trust is going to be absolutely huge to be able to help them out. Yeah. And, it, and it's such a good tool to take advantage of the resources that are available for these in individuals and working through all of the challenges that are associated with that eligibility and making sure that we're not tilting the scale the wrong direction if they would uh, receive an inheritance outright that could jeopardize those benefits and protect that legacy that you've worked to build. You've been there with these individuals through life and now as you've transitioned into that next stage, you're you're providing for their their care longer term with some good structures in place. For sure, for sure. For sure. It's, it's, a it's a wonderful, wonderful way, way that we get to help folks. Um, so yeah. there's a, a little bit of a discussion on special needs planning and a lot of options available. Uh, fun topic to, to think about and talk about. But uh, I think that's all that we'll have for now. Seth, how can people reach you? Well, we are located here uh, in the heart of Hamilton County, up in Noblesville, Indiana, and that happens to be our web address as well, noblesvilleattorney.com. All our contact information is there. How about yourself? Best way to get in touch with me is to go to viclaw.org and book a call, viclaw.org and book a call. Well, I appreciate it as always, Seth. We'll talk to everybody later. Sounds good. Thanks, Thomas.